It's my turn to say welcome to you all and, and good, I would say good morning, but it's already good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Steven Seegaert. Um, I'm working, as Lia said, with eGovernance Academy and I've been doing the project management of uh, this project. We're today very proud to present uh, the TID Plus project. Now, um, I have included uh, uh, some information about the project and where it comes from, where it goes in the conference materials. So, um, that information is uh, extra to, to what I say here, more or less. TID Plus, you will recognize it. Today I decide. This uh, shows, of course, the inspiration we had by the, the, uh, the TOM system, as we all uh, have come to know and to appreciate. Uh, but TID Plus, the plus also shows it, is a bit more. Uh, the plus actually indicates uh, that we have taken TOM to an international level. It has always been one of my personal frustrations that if I go somewhere else, somewhere abroad, and people ask me to show an example, that I always have to say, well, here it is, but it's in Estonian. So nobody could actually access it outside of the people who are actually knowledgeable about the Estonian language. And needless to say, I'm not one of those, otherwise I do my, would do my presentation in Estonian. Uh, so the, the plus points to the enhancement, uh, the enhancements that we have made on uh, the TOM system and also to the international dimension. And then you see the little stars under the logo and these point actually to the involvement of the European Commission. Uh, because indeed this project is partly sponsored by or partly financed by uh, the European uh, Commission. And it's interesting to see in what kind of framework that actually has happened. Uh, in 2006, the European Commission has launched an e-participation preparatory action call for proposals. It's, as always, a long title. Um, and the idea was not so much as you would have normally uh, to have one specific project, no. The whole idea behind uh, this action was to invite people to propose different solutions. And uh, the subtitle was to enhance uh, e-participation or participation in the legislative uh, process. So when this call was entered in 2006, uh, we thought that the Academy that it would be an ideal opportunity to do something uh, to take uh, the experience which, which we had with Tom further. So we're not usually in the habit of entering European Commission calls, but this time uh, we were very much tempted to do so. Uh, especially since we were thinking already a long time uh, to further uh, do something with Tom. Um, after the first call in 2006, uh, six uh, projects were approved and there was a second call in 2007, uh, adding uh, another number until we now have 14 projects. I would like to draw your attention to the Momentum project, which is just on top of the e-participation logo. Uh, because this Momentum project is actually a support action. This project was meant to support all the other projects in their activities. So in the years to come, uh, when there is talk about the e-participation action, a lot will be connected uh, to and a lot will be taken up by uh, this uh, Momentum uh, project. Now, who is we? Uh, we have developed the ID Plus and as, a, as a partnership. Um, and I think that's a very important partnership. It's between uh, the State Chancellery, uh, the E-Governance Academy, who does also the coordination of the project, and the European University Institute. And more specifically, the Robert Schumann Center for Advanced Studies. You can tell for yourself who has the nicer offices. <laughs> the important thing about this partnership, however, is that we have a player from the academic society, we have a player from the government, which brings in all this experience gained already with the TOM tool, not just with seeing the TOM tool, but actually managing it and doing it. And we have a player, eGovernance Academy, which uh, is an NGO which goes for civil society. This mix of uh, partners is, is very important because it's not just uh, an outsider project, it's not just an academic project, but it's really based on, on the real experiences on how to deal with uh, e-participation in that way. TID Plus is inspired by TOM, uh, but it is, of course, not the same thing. 
Uh, we know since uh, yesterday officially that uh, the old Tom has not died but has moved into a bigger family, I would like to say, uh, and is now part of the of the Ozalip portal. Hila will talk uh, much more about that. I'm just pointing it out. And you can see it by uh, the IDET uh, tab, the ideas component. If you're looking for the old Tom, it's basically under there. Um, so IDET uh, Osale includes an updated version of uh, the previous Tom tool. It's not just updated, but it has also been changed uh, quite a lot. Now the TID Pro Plus project actually builds on this updated uh, version of Tom, but adds elements that are needed to be usable international. Language is one obvious uh, issue. Uh, you need to be able to translate this. If you want to use this in Italy, you don't want to have English texts. If you want to use this in, in France, you don't want to have Italian texts. So uh, the, there are a lot of uh, elements in the software which can be fully uh, customized. What is also the base language for TID Plus is English, uh, but it can be easily translated. And more than that, even if you're not, if you don't have enough with uh, changing the options that are changeable through the software. The whole thing is an open source, so with a bit of knowledge, or with a lot of knowledge, I probably should say, uh, you can adapt this uh, software at will and, and make it uh, completely your own. I would say that's a very big selling point in order to have this uh, kind of system spread uh, throughout the European Union. Uh, selling point is, of course, not the word, because as it's uh, free and open software, it's freely available. Where is the big difference between Tom, uh, the new Tom, and TID Plus? Well, um, as I said, the new Tom is embedded in, in Osale as the ID edit uh, component. But of course, Tom was fairly an, uh, an Estonian matter, an Estonian experience. Um, TID Plus is made to be a standalone application as as a, as a website. Uh, it's an English open license. But what is, um, so actually TID Plus is more than Tom was, but it is a bit less than Osale uh, will be. Because TID Plus is uh, meant to take over the function of, of Tom. Citizens who enter ideas, comment on it, vote on it. It is not meant as a simple e-petition sim system, because the commenting is embedded in there and it is not meant as a consultation system because the ideas come from the citizens and not from the government. Um, we started this project in 2007, the 1st of January, and the first thing actually we did was to uh, try to find out what was actually wrong with Tom. And I put wrong between brackets because we didn't just look at the, the defects of Tom, uh, but we also looked at the good points. We all know that in the beginning, Tom was very uh, was uh, very much used, and everybody was very enthusiastic about that. But after an initial period, that went down. Uh, Peter will present this analysis, and, and you will see very well uh, what we mean by that. The main issue seems to be, though, if I might take already a bit up front on the conclusions of Peter, is that the debates were a bit too narrow and a bit too easily dominated by certain what we can use uh, what we can say, uh, call power users. So that was the first step. That was the first important deliverable of the project, to have this extensive analysis. This what hasn't been done before. People knew that something was wrong with Tom, but uh, the, the real study of pinpointing what exactly was at stake here uh, was a, quite a new endeavor. Then, of course, once we knew that, we had to think about how to create uh, a better tool. What kind of improvements can we introduce? Well, we're 2008 now, which is a different situation than 2001. In the meanwhile, we have Web 2.0. And this Web 2.0, of course, has different uh, functionalities and have, has extra possibilities to add uh, to a software like this. So um, in developing the software, we've taken full use of all this uh, what is commonly known as Web 2.0, in short, building your own content. Uh, so we have been uh, able to connect this with other uh, applications, to connect it with other discussions outside of the of the box of um, TID Plus. 
Um, that's technical, more or less. It goes to usability, of course, but it's more or less technical. But equally important is to tell people or tell governments who want to introduce a system like this how best to use it. Because it's one thing to put up a website and let citizens come up with ideas, comment on them, vote on them. But it's a different thing altogether to actually know what you want to reach with that. And there, of course, the experience of Tom comes into full play. Um, so within the TID Plus project, we are also developing a set of specifications, a set of explanation. What can you do with this? What can it do? What can it not do? And how best uh, to do this? In the development, of course, I have, have to, uh, I've, I have mentioned that we have a synergy with the, the newly uh, developed uh, TOM version 2, let's say, uh, e-participation portal. We call it TOM version 2 because we, we have to make this, this distinction, of course. Um, and it, it was subcontracted developing, uh, was subcontracted to Vertical, which is also partly why Aero is uh, sitting here and even nodding, so that's good. Uh, and after it's been developed, we were testing and fine-tuning. Now, that's, that's quite a big track. We, of course, were very much helped uh, by the State Chancery because, as they had developed a newer version of TOM, uh, we could actually test functionalities of this newer version and use them also for, uh, to update and to change TID Plus where necessary. Um, Specific functions and options are tested by us and by, uh, of course, uh, at first a limited group of testers. But uh, the main point here is that the real test will, of course, be in the use. Because what was the, uh, what was the idea of, of the European Commission? Well, once you have made such, uh, such developments, once you have, as, a, as the European Commission did, given money for people to, to make something like that available, and the next step is, of course, is to have some take up by the people who can, who can use it. So in our case, that would be uh, governments of other European countries. In an ideal world, for instance, this could be used, the system could be used out of the box by the government of Italy, let's say, or even by, and not, <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, or even by a municipality in Italy, or, or, um, some land in, in Germany. Hmm? So it's open for use and it can be used and we hope of course that it will be used. As it looks now and which is a bit traditionally connected to the e-governance academy, you know that we are more uh, oriented towards uh, the, the neighborhood, let's put it that way, the world outside of the European Union. So concretely we have interest by countries which are at present outside of the European Union. We kind of hope that uh, there will be the real test, that one of these will actually start using it and we can actually point at it. And you see, we told you all along, it works if you have the right tools and the right uh, information. What's our result? We have a software, which is society-driven system of entering ideas and seeing them true. That's a do participation. Um, as I said, it's not a consultation system. I'm not going to repeat uh, myself here. But what is important is that the software is set up in a way that it is as easy as possible to implement. Uh, the idea is not just to make it uh, easier for the citizen to do things. Uh, one very big concern is also to make it easy for the people who implement it, for the administrators, uh, to use it as much as possible. And there also changed technologies and changed insights as, opposed, as, as compared to 2001 come into play in the sense that uh, we are now moving towards a more community moderated system. Uh, comments are, don't, do not have to be approved uh, to be entered, but there's an option for the community of, of, of users, for the citizens, to self-moderate a bit, to kick out very bad comments or to highlight comments that are uh, especially useful to them. This is the software side, but we also have, of course, documentation side. So, uh, and this actually unlocks this Estonian experience. Everything uh, about Tom and about what you can do with it uh, will now become available in English, basically. So uh, we're already very, we're very happy with that result, of course. 
Um, we're also, of course, making the news and manuals and, uh, as I referred to earlier, the guides for the policy makers, how to put this in your daily policy and how to actually employ this in a way that makes it interesting for you to use as a government, but also productive for you to use as a government. Because if it's seen as a strain, if it's seen as a burden, and if it's seen as citizens bugging you, well, of course, no government will happily use that. So, next to the software, the tools are provided to put it to its best use. That's a very short overview of the TID Plus uh, project in its context. Um, it's, of course, much more interesting to see uh, what it was based upon and where it leads to, so I'm not going to eat into time of, uh, of, of the other speakers. So what do we do next? Our project ends at the end of June. And from there on, basically, what happens usually with these projects is funding stops. Uh, the result is there. And now there's usually a, a gap of what to do with these results. Well, we're very determined not to put this in a, in a box and put this in the drawer uh, with the logo of, uh, of all the partners on there and say, hey, look what we did yesterday or in five years' time. Look what we did five years ago. No, we're very determined to make this a living system. So um, development will hopefully continue through a community of people who are interested in changing things like that. Uh, we will actively seek out organizations and governments to implement uh, the TID Plus software. And of course also invite the user community to offer comments and insights which might lead to further improvements uh, later on. So next time you are somewhere abroad and somebody asks you, hey, what about e-participation in Estonia? And you talk about, yeah, oh, well, but we had Tom already since 2001. Well, next time you can add, and if you want to see and try something out like that, well, we have a system now available to everybody. Go to this website and uh, log in and try it out for yourself. Thank you very much. I'll give the floor to Peter now. <laughs>